It's fur and feathers this week, and plenty of action, which starts in the heartland for a classic Midwest whitetail adventure. One of the most appealing parts of any deer hunt is the mystery contained in the chase, and the many surprises along the way. After we solve the riddle of the missing buck, we'll trek to Texas to pay tribute to Gentleman Bob and the pointers and hunters that are forever spellbound by the detonation of a cubby prize. Nice shooting there, Mr. Mark. All in a day's work, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> This is a good day. Whoa, nice shot. That was dynamite. That was dynamite. This week's episode of The World of Beretta is brought to you by Beretta. 500 years, one passion. The World of Beretta is brought to you in part by Bill Jordan's Realtree, family, friends, and the outdoors. Sako Firearms, the gold standard of gunsmiths around the world. By Federal Ammunition, every shot counts and by Beretta Apparel. Wear it, love it, live it. Those little bucks will just track those does all morning long. And this, this time of year is when, like on those bucks and does, the scent glands on the backs of their legs, they can trail each other, uh, whether they can see each other or not. It's the only time of year when a white tail buck gets stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and still at first smart. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> As legendary bow hunter Fred Bear once said, anyone who can successfully hunt white tails will have little trouble with other game. Maybe it's the challenge of deer hunting, maybe it's the fellowship of a deer camp, perhaps it's the magic contained in a huge rack. Or maybe it's all these things and more that make the whitetail America's favorite game animal. Whatever the case, nowhere is that more true than at Heartland Wildlife Ranches, a hunting preserve rivaled by few. For Jameson Parker, my old friend and co-star on the long-running TV series Simon & Simon, a chance to experience Heartland was too inviting to pass. Jack O'Connor once said that of all the, the different game animals to hunt, the most difficult was the North American deer, and of the North American deer, the whitetail was the most difficult of all. The challenges of hunting whitetail deer are immense. Uh, we had a huge acorn crop this year. The deer, their food source is in the woods right now, so they don't necessarily need to even come out of the woods. Um, Hopefully we're real close to rut time here, so the deer will be naturally moving, but uh, those are the things that you run into when you're hunting. Because it's a preserve, hunters do not have to wear blaze orange. Not that it makes the hunting any easier. My biggest goal right from the start with Jameson was uh, when he got here, he mentioned he'd never seen deer rattled in, come to horns, and just a close encounter of the deer kind. And we worked ourselves into a center ridge situation where we had little fingers coming to one common area. And the wind enabled us to get real close to a covey of deer. And then when we started rattling, all heck broke loose. Uh, the bucks were following each other. They knew something was up, but they all had to investigate. And I know it got Jameson excited because it, he couldn't move without seeing another deer, and uh, it was something to see, really something to see. I hope Jameson will remember that. I'd call successful rattling when you get deer under 20 yards. And then it gets challenging because the hunter needs to decide real quick if it's a 
time for harvest or if it's a young deer before we shoot. So a lot of stuff can happen really quick, but that's what makes it exciting. He's a nice buck, but he's not a huge buck. Sometimes whitetail deer can be frustrating. On one of the evenings, we had a nice uh, wide 10-point buck that was probably five years old, and he went and laid down in a shallow depression, and so we just waited him out. And next thing we know, a doe comes by, picks him up, they're both gone. <laughs> and our, our winter opportunity that just wasn't there for that deer. And on the same night, we saw an old deer. We knew it was a big deer from the blind we were sitting in. This buck came to water, never left the tree line, had a doe with him, and it was over 300 yards, and there was absolutely no way to have a shot in the cover he was in. I guess it wasn't our luck that night. That's him, right? That's a long shot. Do you want me to try it? No. Like trophy bucks everywhere, the biggest, seem to appear in the last shadows of twilight, and only for a blink, sometimes seeming like a beast created in an ever-wishful imagination. The World of Beretta is brought to you in part by Tika's T3 Rifles, guaranteed minute of angle accuracy out of the box. Burris Optics, America's number one sports optics. Hunt like you mean it. And by Safari Club International, first for hunters. There are times when hunting binds us with our past like nothing else. When a mood is a powerful tonic that can bring friends and family to us, if only for a moment, in our thoughts. That was the case for young Sierra. Sierra is the daughter of Debbie Whitley, and Debbie's worked at the lodge for a lot of years. Uh, Sierra lost her dad a couple years ago, and her dad used to take her hunting all the time. And it was pretty important to us and to Debbie to keep her going and remember the start that she had with her dad while he was alive. The little girl can really shoot. So if Greg does his job, I'm pretty sure Sierra will do her job. Sierra, he's coming right through this draw. He's gonna pop up right here on this hillside, okay, come on. I get a lot bigger rush when I'm guiding a kid or a first time hunter than I do when I'm hunting myself. It's, it's really exciting and you can feel how excited they are. They're not like an adult that's kind of trying to keep their cool and hold it in. You can tell how excited they are and it really rubs off on you. Sierra, there he is. We have a draw that kind of makes a T right here. It runs along the side of us and then it cuts both ways. And I had a feeling they were gonna come up that way so I was kind of watching the tree line. The buck came out and it was gonna just cut over the corner of this ridge back into the next draw. And I got Sierra on a spot where I thought the buck might walk. All right, here he comes. Are you ready? <laughs> Do you see him? Yeah. Do you have him in your scope? Yeah. All right, get ready. I'm going to stop him, Sierra. Okay. Okay, get ready. Turn your safety on. Me. My guide uh, stopped it because it was kind of running up the hill, and so 
it stopped and looked back and looked at the blind. Shoot him. You got him. Yes. My heart started beating and I was like, oh, did I hit it or did I miss it or what did I do? It was just a good feeling that I shot it. The only thing that could have made the experience better was if Sierra's father could have been with her. And then again, maybe he was. The lodge is just magnificent, my God. There are three non-typical deer hanging over the fireplace. Between those three deer, there are 58 points. I mean, that's extraordinary. All three of those deer would score over 200 in Boone and Crockett. It, I mean, this is a phenomenal place, just extraordinary. The bad news is that we've been here for three days and I think I've put on about 10 pounds, but I'll, I'll have my lawyers contact them. Ah, yes, the occupational hazard of outdoor television. The thing about Jameis is uh, we had uh, highs, lows, successes, and he got to experience the whole gamut of the emotions. Do you want me to take him? John? Just your call. I'll let him go then. Let's let him go. Good call. You know, the night we did get our deer, deer hunting, it's very rarely a plan comes together, but that night it did. And what I'd like to do this evening is just kind of sit back and let the deer do their thing and uh, we won't be making noise with these dry leaves and let's just see what happens. What we did is we set up with the wind at our nose. We had a small pond that we were hunting over. Typically in the evening the bucks will be coming in for water. They've been moving all day and they need fresh drink. James. The way the pond was set up you could lose sight of the deer for a while. They dropped down into the water area we waited, but he never did surface. Then a second buck rolled over the hill. We got him. Oh, it's just, I see the look. Just his tines are showing now. Let's give him a little okay, bit. Okay, 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 okay. He's, yeah, good he's coming up. His patience here, man. Just keep on him. Come on up. You tell me when, when you want me to take him. Right when he turns. I just had Jameson wait until they cleared the pond and gave us a broadside shot. Keep on, keep on a second. Okay, he knows that, he went to the left. The deer I shot today was a nice 10 point. It would have been an 11 point, but get a split on one side that had been broken off in a fight. And the sequence of events that led up to it was unmitigated adrenaline because here at Hartland we had more encounters with deer than you would normally in an entire hunting season. It's a major adrenaline rush. When you hunt you become a predator and you become part of nature and that's what makes being in a place like this so exciting. The opportunity to do that exists over and over and over and it's, it's a thrill. It's that thrill that keeps drawing generations of hunters to the deer woods each autumn and to Heartland time and time again. This week's episode of The World of Beretta is brought to you by Beretta. 500 years, one passion. Something about being in Texas. Oh, oh, oh. Nice shot. <laughs> oh, let's go. I live in Montana. Montana's a big state, but Texas is 
got the biggest claim to being the biggest stage. And what better place to step on down for a little roughing than that nice poke, Rough Creek yeah. Ranch located near the town of Glen Rose. That was quite the Texas two-step. For old friends and pair of certifiable feather chasers, Chris Dorsey and Mark Pierce, the chance to visit one of the country's most stunning wing shooting destinations was the perfect excuse to escape the northern winter and exercise the Berettas. Oh, I've known Mark Pierce for many years, and is a guy who's really a student of the game. He spent a lot of time hunting birds, he trains his own dogs, but more importantly, he's just a great guy to hang with. Well, it's just like automatic. I think he could shut his eyes and still hit these birds. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secret, huh? Shooting with Chris is a lot of fun. It did take us five minutes out there to start playing off of each other. You know, good shot, bad shot, let's get them both. A little friendly competition, ribbing each other a little bit about a missed shot. Oh! Don't tell me one got through the Pierce gauntlet over there. <laughs> you come here and the first thing you do is you head to the Beretta room, pick out your guns. If you don't want to fly with guns, they've got a full complement of Beretta shotguns out there. There's sort of a, a classic set of circumstances with a great quail hunt. Obviously, it begins with a great property like this. Then you've got great dogs and then you've got great guns. And for me, being an avid waterfowler, I shoot a bigger gun a lot of times, a semi-automatic, but just pulling one of these bread over and unders off the shelf, sliding it up to the shoulder, having it fit so well, and having it be the perfect gun with open chokes for this kind of shooting just made everything excellent. What we got going on here? Oh, uh -huh. oh. something going on here That's big. That's uh, fairly serious. Oh. Give him the high, low, one, two here, Chris. <laughs> okay. Today, oh. Mark, Mark! Oh. Nice there shot. You go. A big quail. <laughs> Why did that bird sit tight, huh? You did here. Pretty point, too. That was. Just nailed it. There's lots of wild birds supplemented with release birds. In addition to the Bob White quail, you've got lots of pheasants That's and chuckers. Like. So you get this change-up combination out there. You walk in over a point, you're not really sure if it's going to be a, a bunch of targets coming out in the form of a covey of quail, or if it's going to be a rooster or two, or maybe even a couple of chuckers. Here we go, guys. Here you go. Look at that, a match pair. These dogs look very serious. Look at that. Woo, beautiful. Oh, more quail, maybe. Whoa, what? there you go. Chucker. Oh, I love chuckers. Here. Here, let's go. Good shot. You're being way too kind today. Whoa. Good shot, he's down. Two chuckers. That was a slippery chucker right there. Texas mixed bag, huh? It is a mixed bag right there. A little Rough Creek special. You know, I've heard a lot about Rough Creek and to have the chance to actually come here and you drive up the driveway here and you see this place and you go, come on, this is a hunting retreat? This is a place where you go hunting? Can you realize the name ought to be the Not So Rough Creek? It's one of these over the top, incredible resorts that happens to have terrific hunting as well. There's a reason it's the Condé Nast Lodge of the Year, and it's one of those places that every little bit of attention to detail is paid to all aspects of, of not just the hunting, but also the stay here. The food is phenomenal. You don't come here and lose any weight, I can guarantee you that. Maybe the only thing that exceeded the hunting was the food. I've never been to a hunting lodge where you eat like you eat at Rough Creek Lodge. Uh, starting with a three or four course breakfast with gourmet dishes and fresh fruit, spectacular lunch, and then a dinner that's, that's beyond description. Fine wines, lots of game, five-star gourmet. This is as good as it gets. Just a wonderful, wonderful retreat. I mean, you can come here and just absolutely immerse yourself in the best of the best. And there's no destination any finer than this. And uh, when it comes to wing shooting, it's pretty hard to beat the, the bird action here as well. Here. Oh, oh, look at this. Looks, looks real serious. Whoa. You ready, Mark? Oh! Mark! Behind you! Oh! oh shoot him again! <laughs> Maybe more in here. You got a point up ahead. You ready, Mark? 
Birds everywhere. Fun never stops around here. Bird in here. Oh, nice recovery. <laughs> Chris is an excellent shot, what? and I hung with him, so I was happy for that. <laughs> he's really a kindred soul. He's the kind of guy that really appreciates what he's experiencing when he's out here at Rough Creek and seeing just a phenomenal hunting situation. And that concludes the audio portion of our tour. Thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Mark is performing nightly, seven to nine. Don't forget to tip your waitress. Log on today to BerettaUSA.com and sign up to receive your free Beretta catalog or to find the authorized Beretta dealer near you. Want more on whitetail hunting? Check out the Ultimate Whitetail Library by calling toll-free 1-800-850-9453.